Welcome to HortTube. My name is Jim Putnam. In this video, I'm gonna update you on all of my seeding pro progress for all of my flowering annuals and uh, vegetables that I have uh, started for the season and I've shown several videos on if you wanna go back and watch those. Plus, cool season vegetables are in the ground. We'll take a look at that. We'll take a look at how the potatoes are coming along. I'm planting some new potatoes. Uh, I'll show you some dahlias from a dahlia jumpstart video that I put up the other day. I'll show you, see, we'll find out together if they have roots on them yet. Uh, that's been about a week since they have gone in those pots. So uh, here we go. Uh, first of all, uh, I guess maybe five or six days ago, the cool season vegetables went in. Uh, these were started in a video from seed uh, in the house, maybe a, three and a half weeks or so ago. Uh, and already all of the leafy greens are starting to pop up and, um, and put on some growth. I took down this end of the vegetable garden, had cattle panels lined up here where the climbing vegetables were on for the last couple years, which, you know, which is um, mostly tomatoes, but also some cucumbers as well. And I'm, I'm flipping those down to this end uh, later um, when the tomatoes are ready to go in, but they're leaning against the fence over there. And then uh, I left two in place so that I could put this, uh, it's, it, what this is is actually a plastic deer fence. It's actually seven feet tall, but it's, it's, folded, it's folded over like it came, um, I ordered this from Amazon a long time ago. Get a lot of use out of this thing. Uh, and it's here for rabbits. Um, I've got to definitely have a rabbit issue. The rabbits would definitely be over here eating, uh, eating, eating the leafy greens if they had half a chance. Uh, so um, it's whatever, whatever it is today, March 22nd or 23rd, something like that. So it should be getting, I, I think in another week, I can come out here and start taking some leaves off some of these uh, lettuce. And then um, I'll have some lettuce out here through um, probably mid-May or so, and then they'll bolt and, and, and seed themselves. I can slow that down a bit um, by covering them. Uh, with some sort of shade cloth if it, we're gonna have 85 degree days uh, later. So I'll, I'll show you that if that, if that happens to pass. Uh, dahlias are here, not all of them, but some of the uh, dahlias uh, that went in the jump start video the other day are here. Um, let's flip one of these over uh, and see if we have any uh, roots on them. Again, they were all, dahlias went into these containers and then, uh, and they, and they were tagged. Let's. Uh, put this over. Soil's not going to be held together very well, so I'm going to be super careful with this. Let's just see. Um, it's been cool, but there you go. There's roots. Dahlias are already rooting. Um, these containers have been sitting on the ground, so there's a couple earthworms uh, in, these, uh, in this pot, but there's the roots coming on the dahlias already. This soil feels cold this morning because it's like 40 in the upper 40s out here, uh, which is probably a little bit cooler than they'd like it to be, but that black container will heat it up pretty quickly. If it drops, they're just sitting on the ground out here. If it drops below anything below the mid 40s, uh, these containers are gonna go in the house or at least go on the porch if nothing else. But anyway, they are starting to root. Sliding over here to the cart. Uh, this is actually, uh, I don't know if you guys know, but I've been, this, this uh, green cart I've had uh, I worked at a garden center when I was a teenager and pushed this cart around and then I had the opportunity to buy it when the garden center went out of, went out of business and I used it at the nursery, then I used it at my garden center and now here it is um, being <laughs> continued to use. This is a very industrial 35 year old cart. Uh, the trays that are on, uh, on, on here today are the ones, these are things that needed to be seeded between six and eight weeks uh, before they go in the ground. And so this was done in the house on the light racks. And then I needed room on the light racks for the stuff that's gone in in, the last, uh, in last week's seeding video. And so now they're outside. Uh, if it's going to pour rain, which it is this afternoon, I actually will put them up on the screen porch. Um, these things aren't rooted into these cells well enough. And if you get heavy, heavy rain, some of that soil can actually wash out of them. So I'm, I'm, I'm careful with that. But the sun is way, way, way more powerful than the lights are in the house, even though I have the lights right above the, uh, right above the trays. So I'd prefer to have them out here. So they're out here as much as I can. Uh, all of these are, they're, pe they're peppers on the end of this tray. And then the rest of it are flowering annuals or perennials. And all of these things, they, none of them would like a frost. None of them really want probably any temperatures below you know, the mid forties, honestly. So 
Uh, again, just like those dahlias, they'll probably have to be protected a few times before they go in the ground. They'll go in the ground around mid-April and looking out into the future, making sure, you know, trying, trying to see if I'm, I'm gonna have a frost after that. So, uh, but this is, uh, you know, Tithonia's up, all the giant marigolds are up. I don't remember what's in this tray. Oh, these are the seedling dahlias. So I have the uh, tubers that I, I purchased uh, over there jump-started and then these are the seedling uh, dahlias. I've got the um, ma uh, mahogany splendor uh, hibiscus that I do every year that go along this fence. That little view that you just had at the beginning of the video, um, these get planted and these will be six or eight, as much as eight feet tall in a single, in a single season. And then I've got that summer jewel salvia that I love so much, probably my favorite annual, not the showiest annual, but just an awesome plant. Then there's gomfrina and so on and so forth. There's just a ton. If you've been following the seeding videos, um, this, this, this garden is just going to be crazy colorful this season. Moved over behind the vegetable garden to where I grow uh, potatoes in grow bags. And I put these in three to four weeks before my last frost date, typically. Uh, uh, that, that's a good time to do it. If we was gonna get really cold, I mean like cold enough to freeze these bags solid, I would move them into the, uh, into the shed or even inside uh, if, if I needed to. Typically at this point, I won't get anything cold enough to worry about. You know, I wouldn't worry about anything in the upper 20s, low 30s. Uh, they're well insulated uh, in, in these bags. I'm gonna plant some finger, some more bags along here and I'm planting some fingerling potatoes. These are just grocery store organic fingerling potatoes. These are um, a determinate variety, meaning all the potatoes actually grow on the same level in the soil pretty much. Uh, indeterminate varieties will kind of vine in the soils, if you can imagine that. So you can plant those a little deeper in the soil. And then as they come up, like what's happening in this bag right here, you can add more soil to them and they'll form potatoes along, you know, the entire depth of the soil. But again, fingerlings. So look up whatever variety of potato you're buying, whether you're getting it from the grocery store or getting it from box store, garden center, wherever it is, find out if it's indeterminate or determinate. And that'll tell you if you need to bury them um, as you go, um, like this bag. Or in the case of these fingerlings, I'm actually gonna add more compost to the bottom of the bag and plant them slightly up higher into the bag and give them all that room below the potato, you know, to produce potatoes rather than producing them on, you know, up through a column through the bag. So uh, that's the difference in the way I approach planting them. Uh, one just goes up slightly higher in the bag. These will mature uh, sometime in the early summer when it gets really hot. The foliage will just go crazy here for the next eight weeks or so. It'll come over top of the bag, down the side, run all over the place, and then um, they'll quickly start to die back when it gets super, super hot. And then you'll see me um, you know, flip the bags over and find out what's inside. It's always a mystery uh, with potatoes. They're being grown sitting up on these wood chips and these wood chips will will break down over the course of the season and become the compost for the vegetable garden is my plan with this space. One thing I will tell you is the black bag is an advantage early in the season because it's heating these up, getting them growing early, becomes a disadvantage by mid-May. And I'll come along here on the sunny side of these bags and place some other containers, uh, pots, some, something to shade the side of these bags in the afternoon because they actually get too hot and it shuts them down before, you know, too early. So I don't get as many potatoes out of it. I want them to grow as long as possible. The longer they grow, the more potatoes I'm gonna get, the larger the potatoes will be. Uh, if they shut down too early because of the heat, that's a bad thing. I think you can see this forsythia back here behind me in the background. Um, I had some, somebody back here cut down a lot of stuff and it allowed me to see all these houses back up in here, but it has actually allowed me to see a really nice forsythia. That's what a forsythia looks like if you don't cut it into a little ball all the time. Uh, it's quite, it's quite beautiful. Um, <laughs> there are very few uh, forsythias that are just allowed to be uh, forsythia. And there's one right there. It's qu quite beautiful. But here, here we go. I've got, um, I put uh, about five or six inches of uh, soil down at the bottom of this bag and I'll just layer um, I left these fingerlings sitting out on the uh, um, on the dryer for a few days, and they've started, uh, you know, they've started to put on some growth. So uh, they'll be about maybe six at the bottom of this bag. This is a mixed bag, and I've so it said before, make sure 
you know, you grow all the same type of potato in the bag, so I'll, I'll separate them uh, by variety uh, like that. I think that's good enough, um, and I'll cover that. And again, they're not really going to, not really going to gain anything on this by by coming back and adding soil later. So this bag will go ahead and just be topped off. Um, but I don't need to fill this entire bag. I'm gonna fill it about two thirds and then roll the sides down a bit so they don't end up so crazy heavy. But, you know, there you go. I'll probably add a little bit more to it. And then again, I'll just fold this, fold this down around just like that. And that's it. I mean, the potatoes are really easy. They're pretty heavy feeders. And so I will fertilize them. Um, they, these need to be fertilized now. And uh, you can just use garden tone, um, whatever fertilizer you wanna use, but potatoes are pretty heavy feeders. Good girl, Holly. All right, so as you can see, there's a ton going on here. And over the next uh, month, this entire uh, landscape is, is coming to life. And I'm doing a weekly tour video uh, if you wanna follow along with those. And then all of these, uh, uh, vegetable garden uh, seedlings uh, and then the all the annuals and perennials and all those things are going to go in the uh, into the ground one other point uh, on potatoes before I wrap this up is uh, these are organic fingerling potatoes you don't have to buy organic potatoes but know that non-organic potatoes were treated uh, with something to prevent them from sprouting so they take a little while longer to sprout once they sprout there's no problem at all but I'm just uh, telling you if you buy a bag of non-organic uh, potatoes and you're waiting and you're waiting for them to to, st to start sprouting uh, it may take longer uh, because they've been treated so they have a longer shelf life uh, by buying organic ones I was able to put them on the dryer in the sunlight and literally four days later uh, plant them uh, into that into that bag today so that's really the main difference for between buying organic and non 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 organic so there you go uh, thanks for following along with these videos. I think that, uh, um, again, by next week, there'll be lettuce coming out of the garden um, and uh, uh, the dahlias should be showing some color and I gotta continue to protect them. Uh, don't jump ahead too much on these things. Uh, cool season vegetables can be planted. Potatoes can go in. The rest of this stuff, we're just prepping and getting ready uh, for it to go in uh, later in April. Thanks for watching.